two, one. Hello everyone, I am Aditya. I work as a software engineer at Facebook. I mostly work on software engineering and performance optimizations. In the, in the recent years, code size of a binary has become uh, critical, especially on embedded systems, mobile devices, etc. Because we, as a user, we want more features and developers put more features into the mobile applications or um, any constraint devices. More features means more code and the amount of code keeps piling up and that results in down, uh, increased download size. It results in slow startup time, etc. So as a performance engineer or people who work on soft, software engineering of the code base, we need to take care of the code size of applications. Now here we'll discuss what are the commonly well-known techniques that can be used to reduce code size. Most of these you can do right away by using the features of compiler or standard software engineering techniques. So let's go to the next slide. Yeah. Here, today I will be discussing different methodologies of, com of code size reduction. The first one is using compiler optimizations. Then the second one is C++ library optimizations, especially C++ because we know we have templates, etc., and that results in a lot of code bloat. The third one is source code optimizations. And the fourth one is by getting insight into the software, like introspecting into the code base and seeing what, how we can um, improve the code size there. Okay, yeah. So let's start with code size optimization flags. There are many different code size optimization flags, but I'll discuss some of the popular ones that can that are easy to understand. The first one is the compiler flag OS. This one is well known to many people. So if you just are not using this optimization flag, you can just go and change your existing compiler optimization flag to dash OS. This is supported in both GCC and LLVM compilers. What it does is it does not, it doesn't try to compromise speed with code size. So it will only reduce code size when it is possible without sacrificing the speed. Of course, this is all static analysis of compiler. So there can be some performance degradation or improvements depending on the, uh, depending on the workload and the code base. LLVM has additional compiler optimization called dash OZ, which, which optimizes for code size. So even if the speed of the runtime performance of an application will get compromised, it will still do that optimization in order to save code size. This is uh, very helpful in many applications where the app size is becoming larger and larger and most of the code part of the code base are not very uh, exercised during the uh, usage. So optimizing for code size make a lot of sense in that cases. These are the popular ones. Um, the third one is F no function sections. What happens is when we compile program using uh, like C, C++ programs uh, using like GCC or LLVM, there are situations where functions are placed in their own sections. This doesn't happen all the time, but there can be situations where it is possible. And this is very helpful for debugging purposes, profiling purposes. But when we deploy the code on in production, this is not very uh, help, um, code size friendly. It increases the code size quite a bit. So if by mistake or 
by some uh, build system rules, you have this flag enabled. You want to add f no function sections. So the original flag is f function sections that says put every function in a se separate section. So you want to get rid of that. You want to add f no function sections. Similarly, the fourth one is f no unroll loops. Loop unrolling is a very well known optimization. It increases the code size, but but it improves the performance quite a bit on many uh, workloads. But as we are uh, talking about code size, so we do not want a lot of loops to be unrolled. So if we add f no unroll loops, compiler will not unroll any loop. Now the thing is, if you, if your application has different um, components, some of them are performance critical. Let's say if there are code which have like which are um, like some kind of um, DSP algorithm or some kind of camera algorithm, they need to be fast. Even if you your app size want to be small, but you still want those parts of the code to be fast. So some careful analysis is required there. Okay. Now the fifth one is f no exceptions what happens is in c++ applications exceptions are uh, enabled by default so we have try block catch block many of the c++ standard library functions are have exceptions enabled by default what happens is now, now the compiler needs to emit runtime code this is the abstraction penalty of exceptions to handle when ex exception is thrown and that adds a lot of code size. So we can add this flag. It is not trivial because if you have throw statements in your code base, f no exception in the compilation will just fail. So some, some software restructuring is required as well. You can partition the code base into parts which can throw and which do not and uh, get advantage of this function, but it's slightly non-trivial. But it will save you a lot of code size if you have a decent amount of C++ code base. If it is purely C based code, then it won't uh, help, I guess. The next one is F no RTTI. This is also C++ specific. Uh, F no RTTI. Uh, so let me explain this flag a little bit. In C++, we have uh, runtime polymorphism where we can do dynamic cast to typecast from base class to derived class. Uh, a specific drive class, derived class. In some cases, it requires runtime in, uh, information. Like there are, there is some runtime code emitted to get information about the type, such that the dynamic cast will succeed. Uh, so such that the dynamic cast is precise. So for that, the compiler will um, put some um, some extra data into the code base. Now it'll. It, the compiler does not know that where, uh, um, uh, like which one, which how many times we are using dynamic cast on which type. It will just add RTTI for many of the classes, as long as they have virtual functions. So and that will just uh, um, in, increase the code size. So what we want to do is, if we put F no RTTI, will save a lot of code size. But some of the dynamic cast will not be legal. Then the compiler will give you error in that cases amount of work required in that case okay the seventh one is f inline limit in gcc and in llvm that same flag is called as dash m llvm dash inline threshold equals n so function inlining is again a very common optimization what it does is when we are calling a function from within another function. So we have two functions. One is the caller and the other one is callee. The caller calls the callee. Now, it is possible for compiler to inline the callee into the caller. That helps uh, improve performance because the bra a branch is avoided and some of the functions set up and restore can be just deleted. So there is a lot of improvement in performance. Inlining is one of the most commonly used compiler optimizations. Now, for it can increase the code size quite a bit because when the function is inlined, 
the existing function still the existing callee still remains because there can be other callers so in that case now you have duplicate code in many places it does improve performance but it hurts code size quite a bit what we can do is we can limit the number of the size of function that can be inlined and this is the flag uh, uh, meant to do that so if we do not want very large functions to be inlined we can limit the code uh, the number of instructions by changing the value n there uh, you need to play a little bit with this uh, flag to see where is the golden spot because if we put f inline limit to like zero or one like very small number it'll just stop inlining and uh, it can um, affect the performance as well so these are the uh, like there's some experimentation required and the last one is f no jump tables when we write switch statements in like most programming languages support switch statements switch statements can be uh, emitted in the assembly as a in different ways there are many algorithms one of them is by uh, by means of a jump table and the most trivial is a bunch of if else statements you can imagine a switch statement as a collection of if else statements but to make it more efficient there are uh, uh, like very um, like well known algorithms and jump table is one of them now jump table in my experience increases code size it might seem counter intuitive in some cases but it does so if you add f no jump tables you might see um, reduction in code size okay there are some compiler flags which are only specific to gcc these are uh, some of them are architecture specific but some of them are um, um, will help you tune uh, quite a bit these are um, not very well known so i i would try to discuss them separately the first one is dash m call prologs this one is only supported by AVR instructions, as far as I could find. Uh, if it is supported for x86, I don't know. Uh, it can be implemented quite easily in the compiler. So if you're, if you have a compiler team, uh, please ask them to do that, and that will save a lot of code size. So what this flag does is, if we see any function, the call frame of any, uh, the layout of any function in assembly or in the machine code, there are few instructions in the beginning which save the callies uh, the callie saved registers okay some of the register there is a calling convention in when we uh, emit the binary and in the calling conventions there is a protocol that some of the registers are meant to be saved by callie and some of the registers are meant to be saved by caller so in the frame setup in the beginning of the function that is called the prologue the sequence of instructions are almost identical in many functions. So instead of emitting the same duplicate code in over and over in every function, we can have a standard function call and just call to that function. It will do the uh, frame setup for us. Like basically it will save some um, registers that the function intends to use throughout the life cycle of that function. And at the end, it restores those registers so that the caller can um, basically use them as the, it was intended. Uh, this is the ABI, the contract between the caller and callee. So in the, in the epilogue of the function, it, it is the same situation. We have a set of instructions which can be just, which are duplicate across many functions. By having just two functions, we can get rid of all the frame setup and frame destroy of all the functions. Okay. It does reduce code size, but um, not in a very small application. Uh, the application should be like decently large enough. Like if you are suffering from code size, this is a flag to go. Otherwise, it is not worth it. Uh, also, it is not supported for all the architecture. So you might want to check again. The second flag I wanted to discuss in GCC is called dash m int 8. Um, what it does is it assumes that the integer has only 8 bits. It does not make a lot of sense in many cases, but if you know that the integer value that are being used in, uh, in an application 
will not uh, get values lar larger than eight bits or you make careful um, uh, you write code in a careful way it is possible so instead of like commonly used 32 bits you have only eight bits so that will save a lot of code size as well it is slightly risky i agree but uh, if you are like like desperate for code size this is one of them the third one is m save restore so this flag m save restore is the same as m call prologs and but this m save restore is supported only for risk 5 architectures so the same thing it will have two functions in the beginning like uh, it will call a function and the end it will of a function it will call another frame destroy function so it will save code size um, uh, i'm still surprised that they have two different flags for similar things um, i don't know why they did that the fourth one is called f reorder blocks algorithm so when the compiler is analyzing a function if each a function can be uh, assumed to be a set of basic blocks basic block is a set of function set of instructions which execute in sequence and at the end of the basic block there can be a branch like you know, think of them as like if else branch but all the instructions in base in a basic block will execute in sequence now we can think of a function as a graph right and when the uh, and most of the compiler optimizations work on the notion of a graph which is called a control flow graph when the functions are um, when we emit the assembly code each basic block has to be laid out in a specific sequence right and changing the sequence can have overhead of a code size like think of an if else statement like if you do not have an else statement there is a fall through right so it, there is a fall through so uh, we don't have to have a both if and uh, like two branches like if and else branch we can have only one branch and the default is the fall down uh, the fall through so uh, like if you generalize this idea like uh, oh, across a control flow graph reordering basic blocks can incur code size uh, overhead so we can change the algorithm of uh, basic block reordering and improve code size these are uh, some of the parameters which can which are uh, which affect the uh, basic block reordering algorithm uh, i don't want to discuss all of them but i'll just want to uh, highlight some of them like the first one is called inline minimum speed up then maximum inline instructions okay there is a mistake here uh, the reorder basic block algorithm uh, there are only two algorithms like simple and there is one i forgot the name they change the layout of the algorithm uh, layout uh, layout of the control flow graph the dash dash param is for inlining um, I, I apologize for that this is a separate um, bullet point so when we inline the function gcc allows us more control over the inlining and that inlining can be controlled by passing dash dash param followed by the flags which i have listed so the first one is inline minimum speed up what it does is we can specify if a percentage there like 20 percent or 70 percent something like that what it will do is uh, it will change the static analysis algorithm within the compiler so it will uh, it will affect the inlining algorithm itself the second one is maximum inline instruction single what that is like the 400 is the default value if you change uh, it to like 300 you will get less inlining so less inlining means uh, a reduction in the code size as well similarly if you see uh, maximum grow copy basic block instructions so it it will not copy basic blocks which has more than eight instructions things like that so these are the flags to uh, control the inlining of a uh, inlining algorithm uh, in gcc okay here i discuss some compiler optimizations which are not widely used but that uh, they can also have impact on code size some of them are in gcc and some of them are in llvm the first one is flto 
LTO is the link time optimization. So what it does is uh, when we write C, C++ code, right? Like we have one C, dot C file that is treated as one translation unit, including all their header files. Now, uh, in a project, you have like, several uh, source files. So the compiler compiles each source file like .c or .cpp file individually and then combine them during the link linkage process. During the link time, all these modules are combined to produce a binary. The problem with this approach, like this is a traditional approach. The problem is we do not have visibility across modules or across translation units. So we lose a lot of op optimization opportunities, code size as well as performance. By having, uh, by telling the compiler to um, use link time optimization, what it does is it allows visibility across translation units. Think of LTO as, imagine if you copy paste all your .c file and include into one giant file and then run the compiler on one single file. It'll have all visibility across many different functions. So most of the compiler optimization algorithm will benefit quite a bit. It reduces code, code size as well. So this can be helpful. The other flag is FLTO equals thin. This is LLVM specific compiler flag. Thin LTO is, uh, uh, is slightly less efficient than LTO, but very close. But it has a faster compile time. In the traditional link time optimization, when we press FLTO, when we copy all the object files into one, it increases compile time by quite a bit because the memory footprint grows dramatically. And all the algorithms, most of the compiler algorithms, which are uh, sophisticated, they are, uh, some of them are quadratic. Uh, some of them have uh, like exponential behavior, but with a very small constant. So like register allocation, those things are, have um, like quadratic or more like more complex behavior. So by putting all these, um, modules together, the memory footprint grows quite a bit and that slows down the compile time. Thin LTO tries to um, fix this problem by only sharing information that are relevant for link time optimization. For example, register allocation doesn't need to know about other functions. Register allocation is purely localized within a function. There are many other optimizations which are very specific to a function. So we don't need a link time uh, information there. On the other hand, um, like in, optimizations like inlining, cross module devirtualization, and a um, few more, they are, they are relevant across translation units. So only those optimizations need to be, uh, need some information across translation unit. Now in thin LTO, there is, um, uh, you can find, uh, the resources online, but it reduces compile time dramatically, but it still gives you very close uh, um, uh, performance numbers, which are very close to the link time optimization. And similarly, uh, uh, it is the same for code size as well. So link time uh, thin LTO will give you reduction in code size, uh, but it doesn't hurt the compile time as bad as the, the full FLTO. Okay. The third one is identical code folding. This is one of the aggressive code size optimizations. It is quite common for many functions to have a um, shared piece of code, especially in C++ where even uh, engineers are careful enough, uh, templates will cause code duplication across many translation units. So, Compilers can help there. They can they analyze functions and look for functions which are identical and they can be merged. So we can just deduplicate those functions and fix the branches, fix the calls and um, basically get reduction, like huge reduction in code size. In GCC, it is called FIPA equals ICF. ICF means identical code folding. In LLVM, it is called F merge functions. Uh, recently, uh, there was an, uh, there is an optimization called merge similar functions. 
uh, what it does is it doesn't look for complete ident uh, identical structure. It, if the functions have slightly, if the function has slight differences, we can still merge them and by putting appropriate if else statements. Um, this this optimization is used in some of the well-known industrial compilers, but it is not in up, uh, uh, supported in trunk LLVM. I have a patch, uh, so the link I have pasted there, it enables merge similar functions in the thin LTO. So you get uh, code deduplication across translation units. So it can save quite a bit of code size. If you are curious, you, I encourage you to try. The other optimization is called, uh, it uh, in LLVM, it is called GVN hoist. So imagine uh, if else statement where the else branch and the then branch, both the branches have similar code, uh, similar instructions. What we can do is we can hoist those common instructions on the parent and save code size. It helps in performance as well. It reduces register pressure as well. It is pretty, uh, I implemented this optimization a few years ago in LLVM. It is not enabled by default. So, uh, but uh, if you use this flag, dash MLLVM, dash dash enable dash GVN hoist, you can use this flag, uh, you can get advantage of GVN hoist code size optimization. It is not a very aggressive uh, optimization like others, but it will give you still, give, it may give one or 2% code size reduction. Similarly, uh, the, another optimization is called GVN sync. It is the opposite of GVN hoist. It basically syncs common instructions in the common um, um, post dominator instruction. So basically if, if the then and else branch has an identical instruction, it, you can sync them into the common successor of those two basic blocks. It also uh, gives slight uh, reduction in code size um, so it, you can try that. The, uh, the sixth one is machine outliner. We can enable machine outliner. What it does is it does what is opposite of inlining. That's why it is called outlining. Uh, in a function, we can see if there are few instructions which are commonly found across many functions. We can just outline those set of instructions into a separate function call and save code size. So if we do this only for one function, it will not reduce code size because it will actually add some overhead of branches across uh, as a call. Now, if we know that as, as a certain set of instructions are very common, so if we outline from one function, it is quite likely that the same set of instructions are there in another function. and Hence, we'll have some commonality of code. That way we will reduce the code size. This is also enabled in LLVM. You can, uh, it, I think it is not enabled by default. So you have to add that flag dash enable dash machine outliner to get advantage of code size. It gives uh, quite a bit of code size uh, reduction. However, I think it is only supported for ARM64. It might be supported for RISC-V. But I don't know because the work was going on very recently. So you have to check it out. The last one is hot cold splitting. This is basically a performance optimization, but it can give code size reduction as well. It is very similar to outliner, but this is supported for all architectures because this optimization is enabled in the middle end of the compiler. Um, I implemented this only for uh, mostly the keeping in mind the performance. But imagine if the same sequence of instructions are found in many functions, then we'll have code deduplication as well. Hot cold splitting and merge functions from the previous slide, they, uh, if, we, um, if you work with them in the right way, you can see a good code size reduction. All right, C++ library optimization. There are many C++ libraries which are widely used, especially the standard C++ library, libc++ or libstandard C++. They have a lot of templated code and we use them quite aggressively across C++ code bases. They cause a lot of code duplication. And um, the problem with code duplication, it hurts code size quite a bit. 
So if we have custom libc++, like you can actually compile libc++ yourself and put them in the code base. That can, they can also, they can improve code size actually. You can have um, uh, other C++ libraries like Boost and Icon. They have, they suffer from similar problems because they are all templated header only libraries. What happens is uh, when we uh, use a C++ function uh, uh, in, a, in, in our code base and the compiler inlines them, so you get a lot of code duplication as well as increase in the code size because of inline. A nice way to get rid of this um, disadvantage is by explicit template instantiations. So when we instantiate a template explicitly, then that is the only copy that will be used and um, we can just uh, put attribute no inline on all those functions. That way, uh, the inlining will not happen and during the link time only one definition which was the explicit instantiation will be used it might be slightly tricky to implement uh, do and there is some maintenance overhead as well because then you have to maintain your own c++ standard library but um, uh, it can be worth the code size it gives um, like decent code size uh, reduction okay source code optimizations Okay, yeah. So when we uh, have a code base which is um, there for like a decent period of time, we, uh, developers keep putting code in there or like, and uh, the like, new developers would come, they would add their no new features based on market start, you can have new features. Now when we keep adding features, the source code starts to bloat, right? It is hard to find people who care about deleting the code base, but it is very easy to find people who want to add code base. So, and the problem reflect in the code base itself. You'll see a lot of like dead code, basically. We can, um, in C++, it is quite a, a habit for many developers to write code in header file. Like they'll write entire definition in the header file, even if it is not a template, uh, templated code base. So when we put a, a function definition in the header file, it just gets copied over and over to all the translation unit. And in a big code base, imagine if you have some widely used header files, it can just have insane amount of um, uh, code size bloat there. So moving the uh, function definitions from header file to like .cpp, the source file can help um, uh, code size. It will reduce the code size quite a bit. Some of the things which we do are not even intentional. It is just the abstraction penalty of C++. Like imagine if you have a class where you have not declared the constructor, or like defined the constructor. The compiler defines them for you. Yeah, and it'll just copy the constructor everywhere. Same goes for destructor, operator overloading. And if you have like template functions inside the class, same thing happens. Now with like there is, um, and new C++ standards, you start having more rules like rule of three, rule of seven. So if you define a couple of them, the compiler will generate code for other constructors like move constructor or something or destructor. And they cause code bloat and, and like without even you knowing it. So if you go and investigate, you have to actually um, introspect quite a bit to find out these um, um, code bloat. A nice way to do is to uh, declare the function, uh, the constructor in your class uh, uh, definition and define it in a CPP file. Even if it is a default definition you want, you can uh, define it in the CPP file and it will save you code size. Um, surprisingly, it gives uh, like decent code size gains and I have used this uh, very recently. Yeah. One um, the other source code optimization is to use a cheaper data structure. This is a, um, uh, I'm putting up a, uh, a um, very counterintuitive example here, just to show uh, uh, how surprising things can be when we are using um, uh, like uh, C++. So we use standard vector, standard deck, unordered map, unordered set quite a bit. Like people rarely use standard list these days, but 
the code size of uh, code size footprint of vector is larger compared to std list and why do we use vector for performance but if performance is not the most desired thing we don't have to use std vector right so um, choosing a data structure can have huge impact on code size as well and uh, these things are not very uh, widely known for uh, because we assume all the time that vector is all the time better than standard list and similarly goes for unordered map versus standard map and i have some numbers here so as you can see it's a very small test program on the top we have standard map versus standard unordered map and if you see, it's a very small file. You just uh, have declared a map and I'm assigning a variable and returning just to not uh, prevent compiler from optimizing everything here. And I have optimized for code size, like clang dash OZ. OZ is optimized for code size aggressively. With a standard map, the code size is approximately 14 kilobytes. But with standard unordered map, it is approximately 15 kilobytes. So I'm not saying that uh, you should start using standard map all the time for code size. This is one specific example, just to give an intuition that what appears may not always be um, the case. So you have to, unless you investigate deeply into the code base, uh, it, is, um, uh, it is not wise to just um, rely on popular wisdom. Like sometimes based on the demands of the code base and workload, uh, think, uh, things require different software engineering methodologies. Similarly goes for standard list, 13 kilobyte versus 14.3 kilobyte on vector. So it can be quite surprising uh, by looking at these things. All right, um, getting in, inside into the code base using compiler uh, techniques. In a code base where if you have a lot of um, code bloat because several engineers are working on um, on that application um, over a period of time you have a lot of iterations of features the old features die out but the code remains there there will be a lot of dead code um, consciously or unconsciously uh, because of the software development process what we can do is we can find out which code which functions are getting used in production or not what we can do is there is a there are compiler flags like f instrument functions. We can use these flags to collect data about which functions are getting executed. Like imagine, uh, so what these flags do is it allow you to add a function call at the beginning of every function, like this flag f patchable function entry and f instrument functions. And you can define a function which is just imagine that function as a just very simple counter so if any function is called you you find out that this function was called and if you collect data across a large code uh, user base or uh, or a large number of test cases you will get an idea which functions are frequently used or which functions are not used at all so it it doesn't mean that if a function was never called it will never be called in future let's say error handling code you don't want to delete your error handling code but you still want to know which functions have the least probability of getting called. What happens is, and then we can deploy uh, engineers to find out that are they actually dead. What using these methodologies, we can increase the probability of finding functions or dead functions quite a bit. So instead of in introspecting a million functions, you are only investigating thousand or ten thousand functions. So that has a huge saving on engineering cost and still get uh, most of code size reductions. Uh, I have recently implemented uh, similar things in LLVM. It is called function entry instrumentation. It is very cheap. It is lock free. You can deploy in production. It only collects uh, data when a function is called. Uh, the, fun the performance overhead will be negligible and there are facility to disable or enable for specific functions. So uh, if you are using LLVM in your code base, you can try it out. Uh, I hope it will give you useful data to reduce code size. So uh, I think uh, this I have already discussed things here, like getting insights into code base. Um, one more thing we can do is once we find that less used part of the code base, like 
imagine we have a feature which very few people are using but we still want to keep them we, what we can do is we can uh, collect set of features which are less used and put them in a separate shared uh, library uh, what that will do is it will not reduce the code size of the program but it will reduce the working set so when the program loads it doesn't need to load the shared library it will only load them for specific cases when those features are exercised so this helps reduce the launch time another very risky uh, uh, approach is to do binary compression like imagine uh, there's uh, in a code base you can keep some of the functions like main function or few functions as it is and just compress the entire binary using a well-known library like zlib or lib zlg i found this one recently uh, and in the main pro main function when the program is getting loaded you uncompress the binary and then load the program uh, as as on demand so this will reduce code size like quite dramatically but um, again there is a maintenance overhead debugging is a nightmare because if you collect some um, if the program crashes in in deployment then um, yeah there will be uh, tricky engineering things that you have to do but if you are like so desperate this is also one of the approaches it can reduce code size by like 20 30 percent it is a big one yeah but uh, it is risky and it can uh, reduce the performance also a little bit um that's all for now like uh, uh, i have the, some references here and uh, now i will take questions let me see there are questions here yeah so uh, first question is what are the security implications of fno function sections if the i'm not aware of um, any security implications I, I'm not a security expert guy, so but I imagine the compiler does not do anything um, special to um, help or reduce the security. Um, if if compiler has inserted a section for a, a specific function, I don't know like if there are tricks like hacking tricks. I'm I'm not in that domain at all, so I'm sorry. But uh, as far as I can say, they should have similar behavior. The second question is. Is there a good re good process to get to the is there a good process to get to the right inline limit it seems it would require a lot of trials to get it right um, yeah it requires trial and error but um, you don't have to iterate uh, like n times you can do binary uh, search kind of thing like let's say the inline threshold is uh, 300 uh, start with like 200 and see if that uh, basically uh, just simple divide and conquer algorithm will get you to the right number in like in a in a matter of day or two depending on your the build time like if your binary takes like two days to build then i'm sorry but um it um it should not take algorithmically it would conserve converge very quickly like four or five iterations you will get to the very sweet spot Any idea on percentage of code size reduction achieved? Oops. Achieved in standard library for C++. I am thinking how worthwhile it is to maintain an optimized copy of it. Depends if you are using a lot of C++ code base. Like if it is entirely C++, it could go five to ten percent. If you have a lot of Ninja C++ programmers who write all templates all the time, it can go higher also. So um, yeah, it depends on the code base, but. Um, uh, I can uh, assure 5% quite easily. FIPA, the next question is FIPA ICF is enabled by default at O2N OS. Is that right? I wonder what of those flags need to be added to O0 if they are not. So at O0, you don't want to enable any compiler flag. Only very minimum number of compiler flags are added at O0. O0 has uh, worse performance, worse code size. It is not meant for deployment. It is meant for debugging purposes and faster build time, things like that. And C++ standard compliance, like if, yeah, like some functions has to be inlined if the language demands it. So they will be inlined at O0 also. Some uh, like move semantics will work at O0 also. You don't need compiler magic to work there. But 
it is not like the move semantics uh, was never there. Uh, compilers have been doing a lot of, not all of them, but most of the move semantics before it came into the language itself. Compiler knows how to do those things. So at O0, um, yeah, these things are not very meaningful at O0. I have mostly used PGO for performance improvement, but I wonder if based on runtime information, the compiler can reduce size. I've never done that experiment. Yes, I encourage you to try it out. It will help you a lot. If you have a larger code base and where uh, like so many developers are have been writing code forever, you'll find insane amount of dead code. Um, yeah, I can. Uh, I would encourage you to try it, uh, that uh, instrumentation. Firefox gives a, sorry. Uh, can unused functions be removed even without fno function sections? Yes, linker can do that. Uh, not for all of them, but for many of them. Uh, if you have indirect function call, they will not be removed. Uh, like depending on the visibility of the function, like uh, that is what it is. Uh, if you try flto, uh, at flto, so many um, uh, functions are internalized. So their visibility is changed from external to uh, like uh, local to a link unit, and then the uh, linker can remove many of those state functions. So uh, you don't, uh, I'm sure with F function settings, uh, more of them can be removed, but um, even without it can be removed. Uh, let's see, what is the other question? Firefox gives a warning about the libglz website. Yeah, I'm not recommending that website. I just found it online. They have, uh, I think they they don't have very low footprint uh, during the decoding. So I, it's not my product. I don't know any of those people working on them. Please try it at your own risk. But I just found it online and I was looking at them. Uh, I'm loving this session. Thank you very much. Um, okay, I uh, have a few minutes. Uh, I can uh, share a few more things. Like if you want to find more about this, I would encourage you to read the manual pages. Um, this is a very uh, nice thing to do. Like if you see a man GCC or uh, on LLVM uh, also has a nice uh, documentation. GCC has a very elaborate doc documentation. Um, like simple just command control F for size, you will find just Search for size and you'll find so many very useful information. And uh, it is a good read. You'll get a lot of insight into how compiler um, works, like how what are the things that we can do there. Um, can, yeah. There might be some other optimizations I, uh, I would have uh, missed here. It is quite possible. Uh, you, you can try it out or you can ask on the mailing list. There are compiler developers, they, and like me, they also like to help everyone. So if you ask on mailing list or um, their chat thread, both LLVM, GCC have very, um, um, like a lot of developers, they are active there. So you, you, can, you can ask any question there if you want you need help on code size, um, they'll, uh, they'll be very happy to help you there. Uh, it is open source. You can read uh, read through the mailing list also. I'm sure there are many deep discussions about code size going on there uh, for a long period of time. So you know, there might be some useful things to to uh, read in that cases. Also, um, for me, I, I don't know. Maybe you can reach out to me on Twitter or something. I can help there as well. Um, if there are no more questions, then uh, let's see. Yeah, there's one more question. I can understand that optimizing for better code size can affect performance, but can it break the functionality? No, compilers are not meant to break uh, functionality. If there's a bug in the compiler, which is very rare, it can happen, but uh, the semantically it should not happen at all. Uh, you should get the same behavior because that is required by the standard, both C and C++. It is called as if rule. As if rule means the behavior must be the same uh, in a very crude way, but you get the idea. Thank you very much, everyone. I totally enjoyed this session, and I want to thank um, the Linux, uh, uh, this open source summit uh, folks to uh, giving me opportunity. Thank you.